we just saw that sigma that is the electrical conductivity is directly proportional to the number of electron per unit volume that is what we call electron concentration and depends on the relaxation time now let us try to understand today what are exactly the failures of the classical free electron theory we are aware that classical free electron theory failed to explain many facts but however i will try to explain only two important things the first failure of the classical free electron theory based on the temperature therefore i say temperature dependence on sigma let us try to see how sigma conductivity depends on the temperature if you take any given conductor and start heating the resistance of the material increases naturally the conductivity decreases therefore in actual practice if you see the conductivity is always reciprocal to the temperature which means to say more and more is the temperature lesser and lesser is the conductivity that is what exactly the actual theory going to tell us but what is this classical theory is going to tell us about in the classical free electron theory the word itself free electron is considered to be same as a gas molecule if you imagine a gas molecule it is a free and it is able to move all over there is no kind of restriction for a gas molecule it is simply able to move all over so the kinetic energy of a electron which is equal to half mv square which is equal to half mv square which is same as that of the kinetic energy of an electron that is equal to half 3 by 2 kt this is the kinetic energy of a gas molecule and if you consider these equations you find the conductivity is reciprocal to the square root of the temperature this is in accordance with the classical free electron theory but this is in accordance with the actual theory actual theory going to tell us that sigma is reciprocal to temperature but sigma is reciprocal to the square root of the temperature and these two theories are not going to have any kind of agreement and this is the reason that that the classical free electron theory failed to explain the temperature depends on the conductivity this is one of the major failure of a classical free electron theory the second important failure of the classical free electron theory is sigma that is conductivity based on n that is a number of electron per unit volume the classical free electron theory says sigma is a proportional to n that is a number of electrons now let me give you three different examples i'll try to give a example of copper we are aware that copper is one of the best conductor it is a monovalent monovalent mean it has got one single electron take the example of zinc it is a divalent it is a divalent means it has got two electrons per atom and the third example that i'll give you aluminum it is a trivalent it has got three electrons per atom now if you really see per atom aluminum has got more electron zinc has two electron copper has got one electron so according to the classical concept aluminum should be the best conductor next is zinc and next is the copper that is what the conductivity according to the classical free electron theory now let us try to see whether the conductivity is really proportional to n so with these examples if we see the total number of electrons per unit volume or n what i say in the case of copper it is 8.45 into 10 to the power 28 per meter cube these many number of electrons are there per unit volume of the material in the case of copper but zinc has got around 13.10 into 10 to the power 28 it has got more number of electrons because it is a divalent and aluminum has got around 18.06 into 10 to the power 28 number of atoms are i mean electrons are there per atom i mean per meter cube so copper has got i mean aluminum has got more number of electron than that of the copper so according to the classical theory aluminum should be the best conductor and it's a conductivity supposed to be maybe double than the conductivity of a copper but if you really see the conductivity of a copper which comes around 5.18 into 10 to the power 7 per ohm meter the conductivity of the copper is very large but that of the aluminum is just 3.65 into 10 to the power 7 per ohm meter 
naturally the conductive what you observe is lesser but according to the classical theory it has got more number of electrons the conductive should have been more but it has got less number of electron but its conductivity is more meantime if you see the conductivity of zinc it comes around 1.09 into 10 to the power 7 per ohm meter so conductivity is least here the one can very clearly say that the classical free lock theory is not able to explain the conductivity of metal based on the number of electron it is not just depends on n that it not just directly proportional to n so these are the two major drawbacks of the classical free electron theory now the question is that how to overcome these theories how to explain the conductivity of metals hence the classical free electron theory failed to explain the fundamental concept and there is a reason that a new theory that was developed and that theory is what is called as a quantum free electron theory and this theory was given by a scientist named Arnold Somerfield in the year 1928 in 1928 now what is exactly this theory is going to tell us about and according to the quantum free electron theory it says that every atom we are aware they have got energy levels or what we call the orbits maybe i can put across these are the various number of energy levels so Arnold Sommerfeld also going to tell us that within an energy level there are also called as a sub energy levels there are also called as a sub shells where the energies of each sub shells are discrete they are discrete therefore these atoms have got such kind of quasi continuous energy shells that are going to be present now to understand how the conductivity really taking place based on the quantum free electron theory we require to understand the band theory of the solids which you already learnt band theory of solids which you already learnt in your second PUC maybe you can make, make a reference now what is exactly the classic I mean band theory going to tell us let us try to take an atom where it has got the lowest energy then it has got the first excited state, it has got the second excited state, the third excited state, the fourth excited state. Like that an atom has got large number of energy states. And as you go up, the energy states are going to become closer and closer, closer and closer. This is for a single atom. Classically, if you try to bring one more atom, the next energy level remains on the next like this. But band theory doesn't say that. But the band theory says that when you bring one more atom closer to it, this is for a single atom, one more atom is brought very closer to it, the energy levels of each atoms are going to split. Every one energy levels are going to split into two, two energy levels. So splitting of the energy levels are going to take place in each energy level. Suppose there are large number of atoms are brought one closer to other. Naturally, what happens? There are large number of energy bands are going to form. So this is what we call as energy bands. So large number of bands are going to be formed and every energy band has got infinite number of energy levels are there and each energy level is a discrete. It is a discrete energy level. This much of energy levels are going to be formed and this is what exactly called as band formation called as a band theory of solids. So there are large number of bands are being created here. Infinite number of bands I mean are being created. Now, if you try to take the example of copper, in the ground state, there are two, two electrons. So all these electrons have been filled. Therefore, this is also a bound band. This is a bound band where there are no free electrons. In the second also, in the case of copper, there are no free electrons. In the third, there are no free electrons. But in this, there are 32 electrons in each orbit, but I have got only one electron. Therefore, the band which is at the topmost is what is being represented as a valence band and the band which is just above which is just above is what we call as a conduction band therefore there are formation of the bands that is taking place formation of the bands taking place so if the lower band is what we call as a valence band and the band which is above than that is what we call as a conduction band and you can see there is a small gap and that gap is what we call as a forbidden energy gap forbidden energy gap 
where at absolute zero kelvin at zero kelvin electrons are present in the valence band but there are no electrons are present in the conduction band hence there is no conductivity that is going to take place at absolute zero kelvin but if you try to see at higher temperature electrons can be possible to jump to the higher and higher energy level now to understand the conductivity we require to have certain kind of assumptions so let us try to see what are exactly the assumptions that we have the first kind of assumption according to the quantum free electron theory is that you know every energy levels are discrete or what we call as quantized in nature energy levels are not continuous they are all discrete form of energies so every energy levels are quantized there is a first kind of assumption that we have the second is exactly that how do we fill the electrons in each energy levels there is a principle which you have learnt it is what we call as a Pauli's exclusion principle which you are aware very well and the principle says that no two electrons in an energy level are identical electrons may be identical in terms of their other states but at least in terms of their spin quantum state they are going to be different that means every energy level can occupy a maximum of two electrons it cannot occupy an electron more than two that is the second Third assumption says that whenever you try to apply an electric field between the two ends of a given conductor, whenever you try to apply the potential or the electric field inside it is uniform. So we consider there is a uniform electric field that exists throughout the given conductor. And the fourth is that within this there are so many electrons are there. You have to neglect the repulsion between the electrons. You have to neglect the repulsion between the electrons. There are also electrons as well as the lattice ions and there is always an attraction and this attraction also should be neglected. That means the repulsion between the electron and the attraction between an electron and a lattice ion should be neglected. So these are exactly the four assumptions of the classical free electron theory, quantum free electron theory.